In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at one of the primary building blocks that Silk Performer uses to run tests, user types. A user type is a combination of a test script and a user settings profile. The script contains your recorded interactions with the application under test, in addition to any script customizations you may have made. We call these interactions a transaction. Examples of typical transactions include adding products to a shopping cart at an online web shop, or proceeding through the steps required to purchase products from an online shopping cart. A user settings profile is a set of settings that can be applied to your virtual users to define their traits. Which web browser type they use, whether or not the user is a first time or a returning user, and if the user has bandwidth limitations. To demonstrate how this all fits together, we'll create a few user settings profiles with varying characteristics. The default profile is called Profile 1. Let's take a look at it. It uses Internet Explorer 8 as its browser. For bandwidth, it has an unlimited high-speed connection. Let's tweak the settings for this profile a bit. We'll adjust the think time options. These affect how long the virtual user waits between single actions within a transaction. Let's tweak the user tolerance settings to better simulate real-world user activity. We'll make this an average user who reloads pages when server response is slow or page content is missing. Now let's create a second user profile to simulate users connecting with a Firefox web browser. We'll select Mozilla Firefox as the browser. Other than that, we'll accept the default settings for this profile. Now let's create a profile for users accessing the application with an iPhone. We'll select iPhone as the browser type. Under Internet Settings, we'll select Bandwidth Type HSDPA. We'll take the downstream bandwidth setting up to the max setting. Now we have three user setting profiles to apply to the workload in our test. Let's rename our default profile Internet Explorer to differentiate it from the other profiles we created. A quick way to create a variation on an existing profile is to use the Copy Profile command. We'll create a profile for Google Chrome with an LTE bandwidth setting. We now have four user types defined. User types are a combination of a test script, a user group, in this case vUser, and one of the profiles we created. The default user type for Internet Explorer is already included in the workload. Now we need to assign the other three user types to the workload. Now that our user types have been set up, we should run a baseline test, but the Find Baseline button isn't visible on the workflow bar right now because we're in the default simplified workflow mode. So let's change over to full workflow mode. And now here's the Find Baseline button. We'll start our baseline test, making use of the user types we created. And our test begins. Here you can check the status of each of the user types. Baseline tests are helpful because they determine an application's ideal performance baseline. All future performance measurements will be compared against the results of this baseline test. When the test is finished, we can view the baseline report. Here are the user types we created. Scrolling through the report, we see all the results for the Google Chrome user type in addition to the other user types. I'm happy with these baseline results, so I'll accept them. And now we have our accepted baseline report. Now let's adjust the response time thresholds. Here are the timers used for the test. Thresholds are used to define good, acceptable, and unacceptable web response times in an overview report. We can specify what sort of messages we want to receive when the boundaries are exceeded. We'll go with a warning when the lower boundary is exceeded and an error when the upper boundary is exceeded. You can adjust the multipliers that are used to calculate the boundaries and baseline results. The average response times of the timers recorded in the baseline run are multiplied by these numbers to determine the boundaries. We'll accept the threshold settings. Thanks for watching.